And the wind, the rain, and all the snow is making it very challenging for PG&E and crews to restore power. It's been like this for a few weeks. It's been very challenging. And the weather could cause even more outages with this latest storm system. That's right. And joining us live right now is Joe Wilson with Pacific Gas and Electric. Uh, Joe, thanks for joining us. What are your biggest concerns with the storm that's starting to hit us right now? And what is PG&E doing to prepare? Well, thanks for having me on. Um, obviously, the storm that's uh, rolling in right now is has the potential to slow restoration efforts. We've made a lot of great progress over the course of the last 11 days. At the height of the um, storm, the first initial set of storms, we had 43,000 uh, customers out in the Sierra Division, which is your viewing area. And we've been able to reduce that down by about 40,000. So we have 3,500 customers that are still without power mostly in areas that are east of Nevada City and Grass Valley. We've got about a thousand of uh, my coworkers and contract partners that are working in Nevada County alone to try and uh, bring those 3,500 customers back. But again, uh, sometimes uh, conditions can uh, slow things uh, and we're hoping that that doesn't happen with this storm. Yeah, we've all got our fingers crossed, Joe. It's been a rough couple of weeks to say the least when it comes to power outages, as you were pointing out. Have you asked for from help from out of state agencies or utilities or is PG&E just kind of handling this all on their own? What's the game plan? So with the first initial um, set of storms, we did have help from uh, out of state contractors. Um, we currently have 153 crews that are working on restoration right now. A lot of them are from other areas within California parts of the uh, PGE service area that don't have the same type of outage activity at this moment. So that's one of the benefits that we have is we can pull resources in from all different parts of the state or out of state if needed. And that's exactly what we've done. Joel, some people have been without power for days. Other people may lose power. What are you doing to help the people who have been without power for weeks? Are they compensated in any way since they don't have electricity and in some cases lose a lot of food, which is a lot of money, especially right now, or some people may have to leave their home because it's just not safe to stay there anymore if they don't have heat and that sort of thing. Yeah, I definitely understand um, what a um, challenge it is to be without power, especially for over a week. Um, fortunately, we've been able to bring back most of our customers. Um, like I said, we've, we've restored over 40,000 customers since this series of storms started. Uh, we have partnerships with a, a group called 211. So if you call 211, you can get uh, assistance, uh, whether it's uh, food bank assistance, uh, transportation assistance, uh, help uh, if you have a medical device and you need charging. Really, our biggest focus right now is how do we get the remaining 3,500 customers who haven't had power for the last um, uh, number of days, how do we get them back in life? So and there's no- We're not gonna stop until every single person is done. But there's no compensation for that because it does become pretty expensive when you're without power for several days in a row. Yes, it definitely does. There's no compensation at this point in time. Um, again, like I said, we're focused on what do we have to do to get lights back on. Uh, we'll continue to have conversations with our customers and look for ways to help them. All right, Joe Wilson with PG&E. Thanks for the hard work you're doing. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.